Hello, and welcome again to the Women Leading Change Now. We are at the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. And as you know, this is our 66th convening. And this year, our subject is on climate change. All things climate change, all things about how the climate is changing. And that's what we're addressing today. It's going to be uh, no different. We have a treat for you uh, with our Dr. Uh, Onika Shirley, and she's going to talk about actions speaks volume in climate change. And we know that, uh, you know, that that's very important, but we're going to get a deeper understanding and a more granular level of what that meant when she comes on board. So just to uh, recap, I'm Yvonne Gamble, CEO of San Pete Financial Group, and we're venture capitalists, and I am the co-founder of Women Leading Change Now, and we are a political advocacy group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend no more time with you, and I'm going to bring up my illustrious uh, guest to the show, Dr. Ornika Shirley. How are you today? I am doing well, and I am just grateful and super excited to be here on today. Thank you so much. All righty. Thank you so much for coming on. And we can't wait to, to hear from you. This is a powerhouse, okay? I know she is very humble, but this is a powerhouse uh, woman. And I told her, and I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to be on my best behavior. She is a Christian advisor. And so when she comes and she's speaking to you, there's a word that's coming not only from Dr. Shirley, but it's coming through Dr. Shirley. So we want to listen in. So why don't you just give us, uh, give the audience, just tell them a little bit about who is Dr. Shirley? Thank you. Um, my name is Dr. Onika Shirley. I am the founder and CEO of Action Speaks Volume Incorporated, where I help individuals to build unshakable confidence, stop procrastinating, and to get their dreams out of their heads into their lives. I am also a philanthropist and human rights activist where um, I help individuals to know about their 30 human rights, but also, you know, equip women with not only an education in the word of God, but also uh, we give them skills that will pay the bills the rest of their lives. So I have a couple of sewing centers in Pakistan as well as India and um, orphanage homes in India where we help individuals to empower themselves to be a contributing factor into their own lives because we have to um, be active um, in our own lives. We have to be active in our own rescues. And so that's just a little bit of what I did. <laughs> okay. Wow. I told you. See, I told you guys, I always bring a treat to you. And she does. She's got sewing centers uh, in India. And that's very important, especially in the fashion uh, industry. And, you know, we have talked about that on the show uh, from time to time. Actually, uh, about a year ago, we talked about what was going on in the fashion uh, industry and the garment industry as it relates to women. And so now what you have is we can uh, look to Dr. Shirley and to her group for uh, making certain that women are taken care of, you know, in there and they're not just, you know, overworked and underpaid. So I'm very certain that uh, she's handling that. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to impress on Dr. Shirley to just to kind of give us. So uh, I, I love what she said, what you said, Dr. Shirley, you said that we have to take um, that what it sounded like responsibility for our own action, for our own lives. So women, you know, as we know, and we can look at the statistics and do all that as uh, being how what happens to us during climate change or especially during a disaster or something how what can we do to prepare ourselves that's what i keep hearing that overarching things it doesn't seem like i know a lot of stuff is going on in our daily lives but this is something that we need to have a preparation for how can we do that and stop kind of waiting for that disaster to happen and then we're kind of behind the eight ball um that's a great question and i think one thing um that we as women have to do is we have to be willing to take bold action and sometimes taking bold actions come with some consequences and what we find that a lot of people are not willing to um, make that bold action so 
we have to first start and that bold action is one is making this a decision a decision that i will no longer um remain where i am and i'm willing to do what is necessary to go to the next level and so taking that bold action i think sometimes as women we're vulnerable and we feel like we don't have a choice and we're dependent upon someone else giving us permission and i like to say that you know we don't need um we need ap's and not pas and ap's is we need accountability partners but we don't need um someone else's approval or we don't need somebody's else's permission for us to be active in our own lives and i think we have to take that bold action to make a decision that enough is enough and too much is too much but it's time to make a difference in our own lives I, I like what you said as far as that um we don't need that permission and you're right many times uh we're sitting there waiting for permission but when we look at the actual scheme of things others men other women other groups are looking to us to make those decisions because you know women uh we uh, handle most of what's going on in the household in our communities we are the ones who are really out there and we're doing these things we're the ones to get those things done whether you get the uh, accolades for it or not so people are usually waiting for well what are you going to do or what should we do so it's always a woman who's stepping out and getting you know getting the job done she might not get the um you know the credit for it but it's always going to be a woman behind getting it done Right. So what can we do to get out of that, um, you know, give us something, you know, to kind of sink our teeth into, to get out of that, I've got to get permission and to step into that boldness and, you know, to really, you know, to make those moves. What, what, what can we do? What can we tell the ladies? This is what you need. This is what you can do. Great. That's a great question. So. Um, as I said in my introduction, when I said help an individual to build unshakable confidence, we must have the confidence and be confident in ourselves. And when I say build unshakable confidence, it's not arrogancy, it's not being cocky, but it is knowing who we are in Christ. And when we know who we are and whose we are, we can take the limits off of ourselves. And so a lot of times as women, we try to build confidence on how we look on the outside, but it's really what we house on the inside. And I tell individuals, you're not going to have confidence in doing something you're not familiar with. But we get our confidence by stepping out by faith, willing to go in, not knowing what the next step would be, not even needing to know what the next step need to be, but taking the first step. And we get confidence by continuously to doing things over and over again. We're not going to be confident doing things we're not familiar with. We're not going to be confident with things that we don't know how to do. But the way we know how to do it is a circular pattern. We learn how to do it better by doing it more. We become more confident by doing things we're not confident in. So we have to make that take that bold step and say that i'm going to try it even if i fail and if i fail i'm going to get up and i'm going to try it again and you get better when you continue to try at things that you're not good at and so as you get better you do better as you do better you want to know more as you know more you get better and you just keep on with that cycle so it's okay to not have that confidence when you start but making that bold decision that it is up to me and i like to say if it's gonna be it's up to me and so i cannot wait on somebody else to make it happen for me because if it is going to be it is up to me and having that in my mind and letting it come out of my mouth which would activate the actions that i take that nobody is coming to save me Nobody is going to make sure that I have everything that I need. You may have somebody that's going to help you, but nobody want to help anybody that's not helping themselves. So we have to make those bold steps, 
even as Joyce Meyer say that if you have to do it, do it afraid, but just do it. Just do it. There is no formula. There is no 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 set amount of steps. There is no timing to to determine when you should do it, how you should do it. You have to just do it. Walk by faith, trusting and believing that your next set of steps will be given once I take the first step. Because I'm going to tell you something. There will never be a need for a second step if the first step is not taken. So it starts by making um, a decision and taking the very first step. Well, that's, that is powerful. That is powerful. And I, I love what you said, that there is not a prescribed set of steps. So ladies, you know, let's kind of dispense with, I've been saying this all along and now I got my back up here. <laughs> that is, let's dispense with that, that 10 step process, that 12 step process, you know, 25 uh, things that we're going to do and it's going to all be out perfect. Like, uh, like Dr. Onika has said, you have to step out, step out on that, uh, on that confidence. Yeah. So with that being said, in looking at, uh, what her topic is, action speaks, uh, volumes in climate change. So what does that, what does that say? What, how does, how do we move now that we've, we've, we've moving confidently. Now we're going boldly. Now we need to make that action. What are the, what is, how is that action in climate change? How does that equate? Okay, great. That's a great question. Um, action is always key. You know, we can have faith, we can want, we can hope, we can desire, but if we never take action, and in the book that I read, it says faith without works is dead. You know, we can believe that it is possible but if we never take the first step, if we never take action. So when I think of action speaking volume, I think about, you know, the boldness, the, the width and the depth of the things that we have to do, that we don't sit around waiting for change. We know as women, women are, a lot of women are still in the traditional role, still taking care of the kids, the families, the elderly in the families um, and, and doing the things of the household. But we have to broaden our approaches so that we will have the information that is needed in climate changes. You know, women are impacted, you know, with the weather. They're more independent, they're more vulnerable, and they're more susceptible to the things that are happening because they're the ones having to make sure things are happening in the household. They're the ones that we are the ones are, are having to make sure things will happen because sometimes if we don't make sure it happens it does not happen you know and as as, as in the beginning as sister Yvonne said that you know that in the beginning that we are the ones that make things happen and it doesn't matter we may not get the credit we may not be you know acknowledged for the things that we do but we know that behind every man is a good woman or uh, behind every successful man is a good woman so in order for us to be able to um, to be able to adapt to the climate change, we must take a different action than what we have been taking in times to pass. We know that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So we have to take action, be willing to do something different in order for us to have a different outcome. requires for us to change some of our habits and change some of our traditions and sometimes it's changing our location and sometimes it's changing some of the people that we're around because if we're going to take action we cannot be around people that's telling us what's not possible we cannot be around people that's telling us what's not going to work what will not happen 
We have to have partners in believing that believing that we can make a difference and that we can adapt to change in a positive way, not where we're just existing, but where we are able to thrive, we're able to grow, and we're able to make things happen for generations to come. But it's time out. It is time out for us just sitting back, waiting for things to happen to us and for us and start making things happen. One thing I tell myself, I say, I don't wait to see what the day is gonna bring because I'm gonna bring the day. I know what I need to do the day before because I plan my day the night before every day. So I need to bring my day, bring my game, bring my strategies, bring my, my uh, perseverance, bring my persistence, bring my consistency consistency is the key that will open up doors and it, it will keep you in a door consistency will help us in climate change in every way possible by we have made up our mind we've made decisions that it's time for change and we're willing to take the necessary actions to make change happen well that's that's it that's that's that's, that's, that's you said it you really put it out there she has put it out there is that you got to bring the A game and you bring that A game every single day. You make it happen. It's up to you, you the individual and what you do. This is what we're getting out of this. And with climate change, with the different things that are going on, I would say uh, to women, and that is start making that preparation. There are many things that you can do uh, in your community to make that preparation. Yes. You know, be that uh, if you don't want to join, you know, some of the different uh, organizations or, you know, come in with them. You know, you obviously, you know, there's uh, the church, the synagogues, the temples. There's also, you know, the uh, Red Cross, uh, FEMA, you know, all of the different other volunteer organizations, the United Way that have out there that you can volunteer in. And if um, one of the things that I like what Dr. Uh, Shirley is telling us, and that is this, if it starts right in your home, is your home ready? Is your home prepared for fire, for wind, for uh, you know the air, the atmosphere uh, changes that may come in? Is it ready for water damage that may come? All those types of things. What do you have in place? What is in place in your neighborhood? Look up, look around. Many times we kind of get bogged down in the I me self of things. And what she's telling you is you step outside of I me self and you start helping the world out beyond you, out beyond where you are. Get out of your comfort zone. Fear, that's false expectations appearing real. Most of fear is we put so much emphasis into fear and making it become that something and then when we get there, we look at it, it's nothing. It's what we've made up in our heads and what we made it out to be. So stop the fear and take the action. Now, Dr. Shirley, I want to know from your perspective, this touches on uh, women, obviously, you know, the climate's changing and what have you. We have, we change the way we do work, the way we do uh, business, the way we interact one with the other. What are some of the things that, you know, in some of those interactions that we have that you can kind of help us to um, to be able to deal with? And what I'm talking about here is this. It's a known fact that, you know, women are many times controlled by emotions and feelings and mood changes and mood swings. And with the with uh, with climate change, that's obviously wind, water air, ground, all that makes a difference. And uh, whether people are spiritual or not, they understand vibrations. The moon, the full moon, it changes everybody's attitude and how everybody is, no matter what. So we can't get away from that. So that's everybody, whether you agree, how you agree doesn't really matter. You know that full moon coming, you're going to change. How can women also deal with that whole that whole emotional thing that comes as these systems not only do they go through their regular uh, cycles but they now go through all these new changing cycles how do we deal with that i think we deal with it um um awareness awareness i think when we are not aware of the things that 
moves us or stagnate us, that's an issue. I think another way that we can deal with it is um, collaborations and connections. And I know that, you know, oftentimes when women are going through emotional mood swings and those other things, we feel like we are, um, we are incapable or incapable of collaborating with other women but we are really more alike than we are different. And if we was to collaborate, connect, and not be in competition, we are able to share strategies and ideas and things that has worked for us. And if we all can bring something to the table to say, this is what has worked for me, try this. This is what has worked for me, try this. I think that if we are in collaboration, we are better together. And I feel like a lot of times the things that try to separate us, because we know when, when, when we're together, we are a force to be reckoned with. And so if we can keep anything um, in the midst of us, emotions and those things that would keep us apart, to keep us from coming together, to make some stuff happen together, because women makes the world go round. I mean, I, I, we, we really make the world go round. When it comes down to getting things done make sure they're done on time and done right that's a woman and i think when we yeah. become aware of how we um i think awareness of how we respond in an emotional way to any situation that's when we have to look at the woman in the mirror that's when we have to stop looking at what they're doing and to see how can I be better? What is it that I can do? And stop asking the questions of who did it and why they did it, but how can I contribute to making the world a better place? Okay. I like that. Connections, collaborations, uh, networking, and what can I do? That, um, you know, that really sums it up because this is, we are truly, uh, entrenched in the uh, era of collaboration, and that's what, and we have to uh, maintain that connectedness, mm -hmm. and we have to actually nurture that connectedness even more so, so that we can break down the barriers that uh, is unfortunate. These barriers we didn't, we as women did not put up amongst ourselves. Okay, we didn't create these barriers, and so therefore. Uh, we do not have to actually abide by these barriers. We can walk through them. We have to realize that we're no different than that queen on that chessboard. And that queen on that chessboard, she can go anywhere and do any way and do whatever it is that she deems necessary to be done. And that's every woman. Because like you said, women are the ones to make the world go round. And we have to begin to walk in that power and understand that that's, uh, that is, that's a God-given power. It's a Jehovah-given power. It's an Allah-given power. That power is given to women because that's who it was given to in the first place. And so when it's all said and done, that's who that power will rest in. And, you know, all the way through all of this. What I'd like us to do now is I want to hear about a treat that uh, the Dr. Ornika is actually going to be doing. I want her to tell you a little bit about, she has a very, very powerful, um, this woman does powerful things all over the world as you can uh, see, but she has a very powerful event coming up here in May of 2022. And I want her to kind of give us a, just a, give us a sneak preview if, if, if that's okay with you, Dr. Anik, if you would, give us a sneak preview of what we can expect because I want the women to really kind of get a fuller uh, view of this so that they can uh, participate because it's well worth it. Thank you so much. So yes, we're having the number one Action Speaks Volume Summit, May the 12th through the 14th. And what this summit entails i want women women and it will be some men but i want i mean main focus of women to know who they are what they have to offer and that somebody need what they have and a lot of times we're looking for experts i want the women that are, that are a part of the speaking platform to know that 
They are the expert. It's time for us to stop looking for the experts and start being the experts. Start sharing our life experiences and give hope to the woman that doesn't feel like nobody need what she has. Give hope to the woman that feels like she cannot do it, but to let her know that you are enough. She She's enough. She don't have to be taller. She don't have to be shorter, brighter. She don't have to be richer. Just the way she is. Everything that she needs, she have. I want to propel individuals into inspired action to know that this is their time and this is their season. And that this conference is going to propel individuals to take the action that they have been sitting on, waiting for some perfect time. I'm telling you. There is no perfect time. The perfect time to always start what you're looking to start is now because tomorrow is not prom promised. And so I want to I want to encourage individuals, empower individuals, motivate individuals, inspire individuals to do what you've always wanted to do. The thing that you didn't have the courage to do because we know that we don't we're not given fear. We're given power, love and a sound mind and that it's time for us to be the experts and share our journey on how we came through, how we went over, how we got out of situations that we was in that many people thought was going to kill us, that was going to take us out, that was going to be the end of us, but not realizing it was just the beginning of something magnificent, something beautiful, something that is going to be life changing, something that is going to impact the world, something that is going to influence individuals to take inspired actions to say, yes, I can do it. I did not realize it until after this conference that I, this summit, that I could do this thing. And I thought it was just for everybody else, but I want individuals to know that a life change now is for them in this season. And after that summit, that you'll be ready to take the action that you've been sitting on. All right, that's it. Well, you heard it here first. You heard it here, ladies. Uh, the Action Speaks volumes, get registered. There's the uh, the link there, as well as uh, on the summit pages, you will be able to link to the same Action Speaks volumes. And you definitely wanna get to that summit. And I love what she's doing. She's drawing together the everyday person. And like she says, stop looking for the expert. You are the expert yeah. because we have taken, you know, any of you who took that dollar and you made two dollars out of it, or you made you you took that that twenty dollars and it spent like it was twenty thousand dollars, and you you just kept on going until it became that which you wanted. If you got a mountain, you say mountain move. If you and that mountain will be moved because you believe that it will be moved, and so therefore you walk in that belief. Well, as I normally do with all of my shows, I always give the last word, as you know, to my guest. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to allow Dr. Onika Shirley to give you the last word in her Action Speaks Volumes in Climate Change. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I just want to encourage women to equip yourself. We as women are more vulnerable and sometimes have less, less access to the things that we need as it relates to climate change in order to prepare, in order to be ready. And I can just hear, you know, this is the season for preparation. Don't wait until something happened to do something about what has happened, but prepare yourself for what is to come. And I'm not talking about walking in fear where we always walking and thinking that this is going to happen and this is going to happen. But we want to prepare for if then. I like to say, if this happened, then I'll do that. If this happened, I'll do that. Have some if then scenarios where you will be able to, where you will be able to respond in a calm way because it won't be the first time that you have sit with the situation even if you had to feel yourself in that situation and just play it out in your mind and in your emotions on how you would feel if this happened, then what will I do? So create you some if-then situations. If this happened, then I would do that. 
If I was to lose all the money I had, what would I do? If I was to lose this, then what would I do? If I was to not be able to do business or do work, then what would I do? Have some if-then scenarios where you have them, where you can look over them. But when the situation happened, you've been there, done that, and you're able to execute what you said, then I am going to do this. It is time for a change now in our lives and the way we think and the things that we do. It's time for us to take action because nobody is coming to save us. And we must be active in our own rescue. Thank you. And I hope that you have a great day.